Hello to all women out there. Give yourself a few minutes of your time to have healthy breasts for life. Yes, your breast, your charm. Keep your breast healthy, no matter your age. It helps to learn what's normal and what's not. Knowing what your breast look and feel like can help you recognize when something is suddenly different. The same way, you pay attention to your hair for any color change, any thinning. You should similarly pay attention to your breasts. Your doctor may give you a breast even at your annual visit and teach you how to do self-exam at home. It is always a good idea to be aware of your body and let your doctor know if you notice any changes. The breast is composed of several glands and ducts that lead to the nipple and the surrounding colored area called the areola. The milk-carrying ducts extend from the nipple into the underlying breast tissue like the spokes of a wheel. Under the areola are lactiferous ducts. These fill with milk during lactation after a woman has a baby. When a girl reaches puberty, changing hormones cause the ducts to grow and cause fat deposits in the breast tissue to increase. The glands that produce milk or mammary glands that are connected to the surface of the breast by the lactiferous ducts may extend to the armpit area. You may sometimes worry that your breasts don't look right. But most of the things women are concerned about are not actually that unusual. It's completely normal if your breasts are slightly different sizes. One breast hangs slightly lower than the other. You have hair around your nipples. Your breasts hurt or feel tender before and during your period. Tell your doctor if you see any of these unusual changes though. For example, if you notice a firm lump you've never felt before, swelling around your breast, collarbone, or armpit, dry, cracked, red, or thickened skin like an orange peel around your nipple, blood or fluid besides milk leaking from your nipples, Warmth or itching in your breasts. These symptoms don't always mean there's something's wrong, but it's important to get checked out by a doctor. They may be harmless changes and can be easily treated. Rarely, they can be signs of cancer. Just like any part of your body, find out what to expect at different stages of life. You'll notice physical changes as you get older. During menopause, the glands that make milk shrink. They're replaced with new fat tissue. Your breasts may also begin to sag more. When you are younger and get pregnant, it's normal for your breasts to get larger and more tender, for your nipples to darken, and blood vessels to become more visible and for your breast tissue to get lumpier. Your breasts will likely swell and fill with milk a few days after you give birth. This can make them feel hard and tender. Breastfeeding can ease this feeling. If you opt to bottle feed instead, your breasts should stop making milk after a few days. Cysts or fluid-filled sacs and other lumps can form or get larger during pregnancy. Breast cysts occur frequently among menopausal women and can cause pain and tenderness. The vast majority of lumps discovered by pregnant women are not cancer, but always ask your doctor when you go for prenatal checkups to also examine your breasts. If you are breastfeeding, you may get sore, cracked nipples, or plugged milk ducts. 
it can lead to a painful infection called mastitis, which needs to get treated with antibiotics. Mastitis is when a milk duct can get clogged, which can lead to an infection presenting as fever, soreness, and red streaks on your breast. The area above the clogged duct may feel hot to the touch. Breast infections most commonly occur one to three months after the delivery of a baby, but they can occur in women who have not recently delivered and in women after menopause. Mastitis does not cause cancer, but cancer can mimic mastitis in appearance. Mastitis can cause nipple discharge. Nipple discharge can also occur in galactorrhea, wherein a woman's breast secretes milk or a milky nipple discharge even though they are not breastfeeding. Intraductal papilloma, which are non-cancerous growths in the ducts of the breast, which when inflamed result in nipple discharge that contains blood or is sticky in texture. Mammary duct ecstasia, typically seen in women who are approaching menopause due to the possible blockage of ducts located underneath the nipple, results in clear or brown nipple discharge. Fibrocystic breast changes, which refers to the presence or development of fibrous tissue and cysts. Fibrocystic changes in your breasts may cause lumps or thickenings in your breast tissue. In addition to causing pain and itching, fibrocystic breast changes can at times cause secretion of a clear, white, yellow, or green nipple discharge. This is a very common condition. When you touch your breasts, you may notice that they feel lumpy or rope-like. They may also feel swollen or tender, especially in the outer upper parts. About half of women in their 20s to 50s will have fibrocystic breast changes. It's rare after menopause, but it can happen if you're using hormone therapy for menopausal symptoms. Drinking alcohol may make them more likely, especially in women ages 18 to 22. Note that it's important to understand that most breast lumps are benign and not cancer or malignant. Non-cancer breast tumors are abnormal growths, but they do not spread outside of the breast. They are not life-threatening, but some types of benign breast lumps can increase a woman's risk of getting breast cancer. Any breast lump or change needs to be checked by a healthcare professional to find out if it's benign or malignant or cancer. Breast lumps that grow excessively and some no longer looking normal or what we call with atypia increase breast cancer risk to about 4 to 5 times higher than the normal in women with these changes. Certain breast cancer risk factors are related to personal behaviors which you could change such as diet and physical activity. Other lifestyle-related risk factors include decisions about having children and taking medicines that contain hormones. A risk factor is anything that increases your chances of getting a disease such as breast cancer. But having a risk factor, or even many, does not mean that you are sure to get the disease. Some risk factors for breast cancer are things you cannot change, such as getting older or inheriting certain gene changes. Being a woman is the main risk factor for breast cancer. Men can get breast cancer too, but this disease is much more common in women than in men. As you get older, your risk of breast cancer goes up. Most breast cancers are found in women aged 55 and older. About 5-10% to 10 of breast cancer cases are thought to be hereditary, meaning that they result directly from the gene changes or mutations passed on from a parent. The most common cause of hereditary breast cancer is an inherited mutation in the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. In normal cells, 
These genes help make proteins that repair damaged DNA. Mutated versions of these genes can lead to abnormal cell growth, which can lead to cancer. It's important to note that most women who get breast cancer do not have a family history of the disease. But women who have close blood relatives with breast cancer have a higher risk. Having a first-degree relative, whether a mother, a sister, or a daughter with breast cancer almost doubles a woman's risk. Having two first-degree relatives increases her risk by about three-fold. Women with a father or a brother who has had breast cancer also have a higher risk of breast cancer. Women who have had more menstrual cycles because they started menstruating early, especially before age 12, have a slightly higher risk of breast cancer. The increase in risk may be due to a longer lifetime exposure to the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Women who have had more menstrual cycles because they went through menopause later, typically after age 55, have a slightly higher risk of breast cancer. The increase in risk may be because they have a longer lifetime exposure to the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Women who were treated with radiation therapy to the chest for another cancer when they were younger have a significantly higher risk for breast cancer. The risk is highest for women who had radiation as a teen or young adult when the breasts were still developing. There is no sure way to prevent breast cancer. But there are things you can do that might lower your risk. Many risk factors are beyond your control, such as being born female and getting older. But other risk factors can be changed and may lower your risk. Get to and stay at a healthy weight. Both increased body weight and weight gain as an adult are linked with a higher risk of breast cancer after menopause. Be physically active. Get at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity activity each week or a combination of these, preferably spread throughout the week. Getting to or exceeding the upper limit of 300 minutes is ideal. Avoid or limit alcohol. Get a healthy diet. A diet that is high in vegetables, fruit, and calcium-rich dairy products but low in red and processed meats and sugary drinks might help lower the risk of breast cancer. Choose to breastfeed Choose to breastfeed for at least several months after childbirth. Avoid hormonal therapy to treat menopausal symptoms. Do more frequent doctor visits such as every 6 to 12 months for breast exams and ongoing risk assessment. Do monthly breast self-exam and be aware of your breast's health. So what about breast cancer? Breast cancer is a type of cancer that starts in the breast. It can start in one or both breasts. Cancer starts when cells begin to grow out of control. Breast cancers can start from different parts of the breast. Breast cancer can spread when the cancer cells get into the blood or lymph system and then are carried to the other parts of the body. The lymph or lymphatic system is a part of your body's immune system. It is a network of lymph nodes such as small, bin-sized glands, ducts or even vessels, and organs that work together to collect and carry clear lymph fluid throughout the body tissues to the blood. The clear lymph fluid inside the lymph vessels contain tissue byproducts and waste material, as well as immune system cells. The lymph vessels carry lymph fluid away from the breast. In the case of breast cancer, cancer cells can enter those lymph vessels and start to grow in lymph nodes. If cancer cells have spread to your lymph nodes, there is a higher chance that the cells could have traveled 
through the lymph system and spread or metastasized to other parts of your body. Still, not all women with cancer cells in their lymph nodes develop metastasis. And some women with no cancer cells in their lymph nodes might develop metastasis later. Finding breast cancer early and getting state-of-the-art cancer treatment are two of the most important strategies for preventing deaths from breast cancer. Breast cancer that's found early when it's small and has not spread is easier to treat successfully. Getting regular screening tests is the most reliable way to find breast cancer early. Screening refers to the tests and exams used to find a disease in people who do not have any symptoms. The goal of screening tests for breast cancer is to find it early before it causes symptoms like a lump in the breast that can be felt. Early detection means finding and diagnosing a disease earlier than if you'd waited for symptoms to start. Breast screening can start at ages 40 to 44. Breast self-exam monthly and annual clinical exam. Mammogram plus ultrasound can start at ages 45 to 54. For high-resource countries, mammography is the screening method of choice. Women between 40 and 44 have the options to start screening with a mammogram every year. Women between 40 and 44 have the option to start screening with a mammogram every year. Women 45 to 54 should get mammograms every year. Women 55 and older can switch to a mammogram every other year or they can choose to continue yearly mammograms. Screening should continue as long as a woman is in good health and is expected to live at least 10 more years. All women should understand what to expect when getting a mammogram for breast cancer screening, what the test can and cannot do. Ultrasound is not typically used as a routine screening test for breast cancer, but it can be useful for looking at some breast changes such as lumps, especially those that can be felt but not seen on a mammogram. Ultrasound can be especially helpful in women with dense breast tissue, which can make it hard to see abnormal areas on mammograms. It also can be used to get a better look at a suspicious area that was seen on a mammogram. For low-resourced countries, early detection is the goal and can use ultrasound for this. Ultrasound is widely available and is fairly easy to do and it does not expose a person to radiation. It also tends to cost less than other testing options. Ultrasound is useful because it can often tell the difference between fluid-filled masses like cysts, which are very unlikely to be cancer, and solid masses, which might need further testing to be sure they're not cancer. Ultrasound can also be used to help guide a biopsy needle into an area of the breast so that cells can be taken out and tested for cancer. This can also be done in swollen lymph nodes under the arm. Clinical breast exam are useful in early detection of breast cancer confirming breast self-exam findings, and it finds bigger breast lumps than in screening with mammography. Breast self-exam using breast palpation and looking at the breast with the help of a mirror are useful in breast health awareness and early detection of breast cancer as it finds bigger breast lumps than in screening with mammography. Finding breast cancer early gives you a better chance of a successful treatment. Women should be familiar with how their breasts normally look and feel and should report any changes to a healthcare provider right away. The most common symptom of breast cancer is a new lump or mass, although most breast lumps are not cancer. A painless hard mass that has irregular edges is more likely to be cancer, but breast cancers can also be soft, round, tender, or even painful. Other possible symptoms of breast cancer include 
swelling of all or part of a breast, even if no lump is felt, skin dimpling, sometimes looking like an orange peel, breast or nipple pain, nipple retraction or turning inward, nipple or breast skin that is red, dry, flaking or thickened, nipple discharge other than breast milk, swollen lymph nodes under the arm or near the collarbone. Sometimes this can be a sign of breast cancer spread even before the original tumor in the breast is large enough to be felt. Many of these symptoms can also be caused by benign breast conditions. Still, it's important to have any new breast mass, lump, or other change checked by an experienced healthcare professional so the cause can be found and treated if needed. When a suspicious breast lump is detected, verification of it being cancer is done through biopsy. During a biopsy, a doctor removes small pieces of breast tissue from the suspicious area so they can be looked at in the lab to see if they contain cancer cells. Needing a breast biopsy doesn't necessarily mean you have cancer. Most biopsy results are not cancer, but a biopsy is the only way to find out for sure. Regardless of which type of biopsy you have, the biopsy samples will be sent to a lab where a doctor called a pathologist will look at them. It typically will take at least a few days for you to find out the results. If you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, your multidisciplinary cancer care team will discuss the treatment options with you. It's important that you think carefully about each of your choices and weigh the benefits of each treatment option against the possible risks and side effects. Based on your treatment options, you might have different types of doctors on your team. These doctors could include three oncologists, a breast surgeon or a surgical oncologist, a doctor who uses surgery to treat breast cancer, a radiation oncologist, a doctor who uses radiation to treat cancer, a medical oncologist, a doctor who uses chemotherapy, hormone therapy, immunotherapy, and other medicines to treat cancer. You might have many other specialists on your treatment team as well including physician assistants, nurse practitioners, nurses, psychologists, nutritionists, social workers, patient or nurse navigators, and other health professionals. There are six standard treatment options for breast cancer. Two local therapies such as radiotherapy and surgery, and systemic therapy using drugs such as hormones, chemotherapy, or targeted therapy. Drugs used to treat the breast cancer are considered systemic therapies because they can reach cancer cells almost anywhere in the body. Some can be given by the mouth, injected into a muscle, or put directly into the bloodstream. Depending on the type of breast cancer, different types of drug treatment might be used, including chemotherapy, hormone therapy, targeted drug therapy, and immunotherapy. Typically, treatment is based on the type of breast cancer and its stage. Other factors including your overall health, menopause status, and personal preferences are also taken into account. The earlier the stage, the better the outcome of prompt and early treatment. The stage of your breast cancer is an important factor in making decisions about your treatment options. In general, the more the breast cancer has spread, the more treatment you will likely need. But other factors can also be important, such as if the cancer cells have hormone receptors, that is if the cancer is ER positive or PR positive, if the cancer cells have large amounts of HER2 new protein, that is, if the cancer is HER2 positive, if the cancer cells have a certain gene mutation, your overall health and personal preferences, if you have gone through menopause or not, 
how fast the cancer is growing, and if it is affecting major organs like the lungs or the liver. Stage 0 cancers are limited to the inside of the milk duct and are non-invasive. It does not invade nearby tissues. Treatment is surgery and perhaps hormone therapy. Most women with breast cancer in stages 1, 2 are treated with surgery, often followed by radiation therapy. Many women also get some kind of systemic drug therapy. In general, the more the breast cancer has spread, the more treatment you will likely need. The types of drugs that might work best depend on the tumor's hormone receptor status, HER2 status, and other factors. Similarly so with stage 3, although radiotherapy and chemotherapy always are given, since this stage already involves cancer spreading to the lymph nodes. Four cancers have spread beyond the breast and nearby lymph nodes to other parts of the body. When breast cancer spreads, it mostly commonly goes to the bones, liver, and lungs. It may also spread to the brain or other organs. For women with stage 4 breast cancer, systemic drug therapies are the main treatments. Although systemic drug chemotherapy, which may be in combination with targeted therapy, are the main treatment for stage 4 breast cancer, surgery, radiation therapy are sometimes used as well. These can help treat breast cancer in a specific part of the body, but they are very unlikely to get rid of all of the cancer. These treatments are more likely to be used to help prevent or treat symptoms or complications from the cancer. So dear ladies, let's go! Let us fight breast cancer! Let's treasure our breasts! Let us keep our breasts healthy! We love our breasts and we want our breasts to be healthy. Thank you for becoming breast conscious now and forever.